the Sabbath up here, and today I'm doing another episode of Amphibia, guys. And it's really nice, because this week I'm able to take a break from all the theorizing and such, as we have a nice, really, really relaxing pair of episodes. I really hope I didn't miss something that ties into the story, because then I'm going to have to go back and look through. And since I'm taking it Fates Valley value, I'm going to just talk about the episode normally. So it starts off really nicely. Um, so Anne's mom is basically giving out breakfast to the Hot Pop and Polly. And Hot Pop and Polly being very polite, ask nicely, and are super grateful. And then Sprig comes, who basically treats us like his own house. Comes down, just eats the eggs, says they need something else, and just takes hot sauce after that. A bunch of stuff out of the fridge. Which obviously does not fit well with Anne's mom. After this, Pop, Pop and Polly basically explain to Sprig that they're guests and not really um, family. Even though Anne's part of the planters, that doesn't mean they're part of the boon trees. Which really resonates with Sprig because Sprig really wants to be a part of this family. So he re- now he decides he's going to go and try his best to be a part of this family. So really, Hot Pop and Polly take a backseat to this episode. I mean, this is, if not the second to last or so this is the last time they appear in this first episode and as I go to the restaurant as Anne wants Anne and her mother are working Sprig wants to work but because he's a guest Anne's mom gives him a nice tea and basically tells him to wait around which he does not want to do then we're introduced to Ned which is one of the main characters not only another new character that's been added but one of the main characters that propels this episode forward. He's basically the restaurant's biggest customer, and now he wants to work with them. So outside, he wants to start a food truck with them, help their business, and he wants the recipes so he can do it outside because he loves the place. And I think that's really nice. It's a villain, but in the sense of he's not actually trying to be bad. He's more trying to do something that doesn't really work out. So after we see the excess, we see um, people's crisis when they come near. Because apparently, since his thing is called Ty, and in very small letters on the go, and this is called Ty Go, they get <laughs> deathly confused which which one is there, and have an existential crisis about which one's the one they should go to, and decide none. So eventually, he starts stealing business, and Sprig tries to stop it, even though he's advised to stay out of it. So he does different different stuff, like at first he complains that this food made him pink, which we all know is true, but apparently everyone else wants to be pink. So then Anne says she got scolded for what Sprig did, and Sprig wonders why she got in trouble instead of him, and she says that it's because she's family and he's a guest, so she will get scolded, and a guest wouldn't get scolded. This annoys Sprig, and he wants to be part of the family, so... He tries again this time, putting a note to Ned, making him leave the truck, think he's going to get the recipes, and take care of the food truck. And this leads to a lot of stuff we've actually seen in the trailers. After Anne fights them to get out of the car, and Spurt starts it anyway, we get to a bunch of scenes uh, like this one when they're in the car, that's new, new angles, but mostly it's them in the car driving. I thought they'd be driving away or something. No, they're mostly just driving the food truck and trying to control it. Because now that it's moving, they I don't know if they couldn't stop it. Maybe I missed that. But I guess they just don't know how. That's the one thing that confused me. But they did treat this, which I thought was funny, like a snail for a bit. Sprig open, tried to open up the place where you put CDs or discs. And he tried to tr- open it because he thought of it like Bessie, where you could open it and add something and take something out of there. I forgot the main specifics about what you could do with Bessie, but I know it was basically around there. You could take like a pouch out of Bessie, which is really gross but funny. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, they mostly go and drive around, and not really important to the plot, though. So, I'm mostly going to skip over this part, but if you guys want it, you should definitely go check it out, along with the whole episode. And we get a resolution. Um, Ned is allowed to be the driver, 
and we'll do deliveries and they'll we'll be low pay he's super happy to be a part of the company which i think is really nice he won't get any recipes but everyone's happy while spring gets scolded which is great for him because he treats it as being a part of the family now which is really nice and in the next episode, Adventures in Cat Sitting, it's really interesting. It's like, for the first time ever, I've seen two episodes kind of directly continue. I mean, the thing is, like, Sprig talks about being a family in this episode. And it also talks about Hot Pop and Polly being guests. So, we shall continue on. We start off with Domino being Domino, just falling down the stairs and knocking a bunch of stuff off places where they should be. Then we have Anne complaining because she's reading places about interdimensional travel, and it's mostly not good information, mostly bad information. Pop Pop keeps getting refills of his drink. He feels the best he's felt in years. And Hot Pop mentioned someone named Cousin Stanley, who apparently they don't even know if he was really their cousin. And he would stay for so long that they actually threw him out the, the house. Literally. Took him and threw him out the window. Then he stayed and just did not act appreciative. And after Hop Pop realizes he's been there a week, he does not want to be like that. Really? In this episode, there's not much to talk about. I mean, everyone has to do something, so the dad has to go work at the restaurant, and the mom is going to take and to the dentist so someone has to take domino to the vet and of course they volunteer then they mostly do a domino being taken to the vet they first walk and go to the bus after they get a phone from the dad to call an emergency and of course hop hop doesn't want to do that but we did learn about one of hop hop's skills he can perfectly mimic a bunch of earth sounds like he didn't have a card to get on the bus so he made a perfect beeping noise to sound like he swiped a card and you also see it later on in the episode. So, after he gets sent off the bus for licking people, um, everyone, they decide to keep going. And while Polly wants to call, Hop Up, of course, does not want to call the dad because he wants to seem like a grateful house guest who can also help around the house. They finally get to the vet and Sprig sees his brethren, a frog, who, though I don't know if he could understand him, I find it funny because I think this is the actual first contact with earth frog and I say it's funny guys because imagine you went to another planet and you saw a bunch of humans just small and being held by frogs yes so after they find out Domino's are fine they mostly ask weird questions about frogs to the vet that she doesn't really understand like um, a frog talking about back pain, but for him, frogs can't talk, so it's really interesting and all. So they leave the vet, but Domino escapes, leading them to end up having to call Anne's dad. Once they call, they learn Domino is at a shawarma place in which they have to get him out because they treat him like family and they won't allow him near him. So, like I said earlier, this is where Hop Pop skill comes into use, and he mimics the sound of a fire alarm. As it happens, everyone leaves to the leaves the restaurant, and then I have to show you guys a scene because it's the only way I can do it justice. Polly starts becoming a ball of yarn, and after Anne's dad comes to pick them up, and they all can drive away as the fire people come, even though there is no fire. So then Hot Pop apologizes because he feels like a freeloader. And Mr. Boontry basically explains to him that after they took care of Anne and basically kept her alive and fed for five months, they are never going to be freeloaders and can act for whatever they want. And I kind of expected this. It's nice that this character growth happened so quickly. I mean, we're in the third episode, but they really needed to know that because it's really important. So that's really the end of these two episodes. I thought they were really nice and relaxing. These are the kind of episodes I watch over and over again. Not really story-filled ones. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a nice day.